Talk Show. Recorded live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the University of Acadia Talk Show Call. This is Terry Lynn, and we have with us Frank O'Collins from Australia to uh, talk through some things and uh, continue some of our conversations that we've had over the last couple of weeks. We've got some great things to cover uh, tonight, and tonight being the 18th day of the uh, fifth month, May 2011, over here in the States and in Canada. Um, So with us tonight, we have Frank, and we have several folks on board, and just as a quick reminder, uh, those that are on the phone line, when you're uh, ready to ask questions during the question and answer session, just press star 8, and that will put you in the question queue. We'll get to those in the order we receive them. And if those of you on the chat, if you will type question in all uppercase, and following that, put a colon and type your question in in proper case. That helps us a lot to, know, to find those questions on the uh, chat. So with that, uh, also just want to remind everyone uh, we are here to help uh, – Share education, share information, and share knowledge. So please don't misconstrue anything that is spoken about as legal advice. Uh, And with that, I'll turn it over to you, Frank. Thanks, Terry. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming on uh, to the call tonight. And thank you to all those that do download the call after this, after this live call and, and listen to it, and those that share the information to a broader audience. So thank you. As always, you can listen to the call on university.ucadia.info and that site now has had all the issues associated with warnings and things cleaned up. So if any of you have had any kind of warnings or or concerns, that's all been fixed up now. So you can go to university.ucadia.info or of course you can listen to the call again from TalkShare. Tonight I want to cover a subject that carries on from last week when we spoke of virtue conquers peril to deal with a subject that I think needs to be dealt with in our own minds once and for all and that is ending fear once and for all. Ending fear once and for all. And the way that I would like to approach that and share with you tonight is to give you a number of ideas to think through in a logical succession, not a lot of them, just some key ones, that if you keep these ideas in mind, there is no way, there is no way people can control you again, control anyone again with fear. Fear and force being the two most powerful weapons for the ruling families to remain in power, And when fear is no longer feared, you are taking away one of their most powerful weapons. So I want to cover that, ending fear once and for all. I want to share with you some of the update information that we've been covering on the canons of law. And I know this has been a work in progress. And uh, I tell you, I'm, I'm frustrated that I can't show the finished product to you yet. But, boy, it it has been a fantastic research process. There's been a number that have been enormously helpful in the uh, discussion of the ideas, and I'm very keen to share with you some of the fantastic groundbreaking work in the canons and and especially in the cognitive law. I want to share with you an important historic communication that we are sending out within the next week ahead of a day Uh, called Pentecost and I want to explain to you this is a package that's going to Benedict the 16th to the head of the Jesuits and to the head of the Franciscans and it signals the end of a the the master trust the trust of all trusts a trust called Pontifex Romanus that was established in 1455 and this document and this instruments signals the lawful, moral, legal end of that trust. And I want to explain to you why it's so significant and share with you how that's going about. 
And then I want to finish off tonight and, and talk honestly about the financial system and the process of the financial system, how it's going, why we haven't turned it on yet, but just explain to you some of the logic behind it and explain why it's so important that the communities need to be finished before it's turned on and then talk about just issues that I have present situation and I want to share with you just where I'm at because obviously uh, if I'm doing this work and I, I want to be honest with you and tell you where I'm at financially because I'm having a rough patch like all of you and I need ultimately probably the first time that I'm going to ask this directly I, I'm going to ask if, if uh, any of you can help through this because with six months to go I want to make sure that everything I'm doing is delivered in that time and really ultimately you are the patrons of Eucadia. There is no one else. So with that all in mind, I hope with what we shared tonight that you can go away from this call being more resolute in knowing who and what you are, in sharing this information with other people to say we are talking about the end of the reign of fear, people pressing our buttons to control us, ending the reign of the control of mind, and that whatever happens in the next few days, weeks, and months, whatever happens, the world will not be the same. We will see an end. So that is what I hope. I hope that this adds to that process and adds to your knowledge, and I look forward to your feedback. So let's get started. Well, speaking of fear, there is a number of you that I'm sure watched and many of you that have heard that the 60 Minutes program of CBS went out of its way on the weekend to do a hatchet job on what they quote as the sovereign citizen movement, a sovereign citizen movement. What some of you may not know is that the program was almost entirely prepared research, and I'm not clear whether they funded it, but certainly in terms of preparing it, that you could say that they did help fund the program through a group, the Southern Poverty Law Centre, which is a propaganda arm of the Anti-Defamation League, the Ben I. Brith, and so that should tell you ultimately who was behind the propaganda of 60 Minutes. In fact, the major spokesperson on it, uh, uh, JJ McNabb, is a paid disinformation agent through this arm. And they call it Southern Poverty Law Centre. They could have called it the old war widows society if they could get away with such a name. And it is absolutely the same modus operandi as Chevron and Shell and BP did in the 90s and the 80s where they formed all these propaganda arms and called them clean energy lobby and, and uh, free energy lobby, which was nothing more than to protect their interests. So they did this program and they put it to air and they tried their absolute best to slander and accuse that there is a group of people, predominantly in America, but around the world, that, uh, that are seeing government as corrupt, seeing government uh, as now viewing the, the population as an enemy, using the law system and paperwork to try and get remedy, and in some cases, when all hope is lost, that, that some people on the fringes who are associated with this may have resorted to violence. Well, while it is sad, and it is particularly sad when anyone has found themselves resorting to violence and no one should ever endorse violent acts, no matter what the cause. What CBS and 60 Minutes and those that promoted it showed is that they are completely out of touch with the American people, the Canadian people and the people of the world. Because far from promoting a message of fear and danger, far from succeeding in promoting a, 
fractionalizing or isolating of a group, they basically told the world that people who wish to stand up and believe that the constitutions of their country mean something are terrorists. And whether they realize it or not, and I don't think they do because I think they're stupid, they talk amongst themselves and they don't listen, what they have actually done is an enormous service to those that are waking up. Now, they could have picked a million different words to call this group. And I thought of some the other night when I was thinking about what they could have called. They could have named this group such names that the name itself did half the work. Instead, stupidly, stupidly, they have chosen a name that reflects the intention of the founding fathers of the United States, a sovereign citizen, by definition, is one that subscribes to the sovereignty bestowed to them under the US Constitution. And the fact that the FBI and others have openly proclaimed that they view sovereign citizens as the enemy means that CBS published a public notice whereby the government and its arms have declared war on every single man and woman in America and the world who believes the values of their constitutions are real. The FBI has declared war on anyone who believes they are not a slave. So I think these people have become so stupid and deluded by their mental illness that they thought they were doing a hatchet job what they've done is that they've shown to more people by these words that there is a war and it is a war between the government ruled by an elite against its own people. Exactly the same as Egypt. Exactly the same as Libya. Exactly the same as Syria. It's just we have not seen the same issues in the streets yet. Well, fear is and has been their major weapon for millennia. And how do we end this fear once and for all? Well, before we end it, let's look at what it is that they're trying to do. Is it fear of the flesh or is it fear of the mind? Let's go back to this word government for a moment. Two words, gov, or govern, and ment. Now, ment, in Latin, comes from mentis, or mens, and it means mind. And when we look at the other part of it, govern, guber, or govern, so guber means control. So if you look at guber, meaning control, and ment, meaning mind, what does government mean? by definition, mean control of the mind. What we have been dealing with for a long, long time is a system that recognised that unless you control the minds of the people, you cannot stay in power. So the government and the fears of terrorist attack and the fears of coming comets or brown dwarfs or whatever Elanin might be or the fear of earthquakes or the fear of losing your job or the fear of the collapse of the economy or the fear of cancer 